Hello friends and welcome to PyShine. Today, we will talk about UDP or User Datagram Protocol. By using OpenCV we will extract the images from a video. In Python, with UDP-based socket programming, we will start a server to send these images to its client. The server and client modules can either run on the same computer or two separate computers that are connected to the Wi-Fi. All right, let's imagine a common scenario where two machines are connected to a Wi-Fi router. UDP is an important part of the Internet Protocol suit. The messages are called datagrams. UDP uses simple connectionless communication model. It has no handshaking procedure, therefore, there is no guarantee of delivery of messages. In contrast, the TCP uses three-way handshake mechanisms to ensure reliability. However, UDP avoids the overhead, which is incorporated in the TCP. This enables the usage of UDP in the time-sensitive applications, where the packet drop is preferable over the weighting of retransmissions. Let's assume these are the two timelines. We will use them to show the transmission of datagrams between server and client. The client knows socket address of the server. The server starts listening at its socket address. Initially, the server has no information about the client's address. It is just waiting for any incoming message. So, our client will send a hello datagram to the server. With this hello datagram, the server will get information about the address of client. The server will prepare the image data and send it to the client. The client will receive this image and show it to a window. Irrespective of the information, whether the client has received the datagram, the server will continue to send the next image frames. Alright, for the Mac operating system, we require this command in the terminal window. However in Windows operating system, the Python code will set this size. It will increase the maximum datagram size in bytes. This size will help us to keep the complete image in a single datagram. Let's start the server-side coding. First we require these essentials. We will use Base64 to convert the image data into text format. Here, we assign a buffer size. Now, let's make the UDP server socket. For the cross-platform development, we will use setSock option function with the specified buffer size. Now, let's get to the host IP address. We 
We run this code in the terminal to see the IP address. Please note that this address is a local host. It cannot be used for transmitting data. The proper way of finding your IP address is available in the description. So you need your own IP address here. IP addresses starting from 127 are specific to localhost. Now, with the port and IP, we will make the socket address. Let's see if the server can bind to this address. Next step is to capture the video or a webcam data. We have this MP4 video file. You can also replace the string with zero for the webcam. Here we initialize the variables to obtain the frame rate. Now, in a while loop, the server will try to receive the datagram from any client on its socket address. We already have a similar client side code. The client will send a hello message. So let's run both server and client codes in the terminal. You see that, as we run the code on the client side, the server has received a hello message. Now, let's clear both these terminals, and this time, we try to send images to the client. We will keep the width of image to 400 or less because we want to send this image in a single shot of datagram. After resizing the image, we will encode it with a JPEG quality of 80%. This is a good trade-off between image size and quality. Base64 encoding and decoding is used to convert binary data to an American standard for information interchange, text format, and vice versa. Now, we can send this message to the client address. Using imshow function, we will display the transmitted frame at the server side.
Similarly, at the client side, we will receive the datagram using these lines of code. First, we will decode the received datagram. Then, we will recover the image data as shown. Let's save and run the codes. You can see that the transmitted and received images are rendering at a high frame rate. But, what exactly? Is this frame rate? To answer this question, let's add up the relevant code. Press Ctrl C in both terminal windows. By using these variables, we will count the time taken by 20 frames in seconds. Then, simply divide 20 by that time interval to obtain the frames per second. We will overlay the frame rate value on the image. Similarly, we can find the frame rate in the client code. Let's save and run the codes. That's a pretty good frame rate but, let's change the font. Please note that, the frame rate also depends on the type of video or webcam. We would like to thank you for appreciating PyShine. Your comments are highly valuable. That's all for today. Have a nice day and see you again.